Hey guys, welcome to another WTF video. On today's video, we're going to be taking a look at TailScale and how you can integrate it into your uh, main sale instance or Octoprint instance to gain remote access to your 3D printer for controls, starting, stopping prints, and what have you. All right, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay. Here we are in part one of the setup process. So to set up uh, access to our 3D printers remotely, we're going to first need to set up a TailScale account. So to do that, we're going to navigate to the TailScale website. I'll put a link in the description down below for their website. So once we get here, we can actually navigate to the pricing tab. You can see that underneath of the pricing tab, they have several different accounts that you can set up uh, to access your devices remotely. Luckily, they offer a free option that gives access to 20 different devices. Um, that should be more than enough for most people to access one, two, or even three of their 3D printers remotely. So we can go ahead and get started. Uh, underneath of the account setup page, we can select any of the different uh, login providers they have linked above. I personally use Google. You can use the account of your choice. So we will select the account. I have previously logged in and set up my account in the past so it takes me directly to the admin page however if this is the first time you've set up your account it will walk you through the initial setup of your first machine uh, you'll want to set this uh, tail scale service up on any machine you want to use to access your 3d printer whether that be a uh, remote desktop whether that be a iphone an android phone a tablet etc you'll want to install the tail scale uh, service and client on any of those uh, as you can see here i have it set up on my phone and a few of my different computers as well as a couple other 3d printers i have that i want to access remotely but to set up this new device we can click on the a uh, little link here in the bottom right hand corner to get the directions for setting it up. Okay, so here we move on to part two, setting up the tail scale client on our Raspberry Pi instance. So once we've set up the tail scale client on all the devices we want to use to access our device, our Raspberry Pi, we can click Linux because the Raspberry Pi is obviously a Linux machine and we can drop down to Raspberry. So that gives us the four simple commands we need to run to set up the client on our Raspberry Pi. So to do that, we will have to SSH into our Raspberry Pi to run these commands. You can use any uh, SSH uh, program of your choice. I'm using terminal. So we can SSH pi at main sale OS .local. We can type the standard password because this is a blank instance. And we will be logged in. So we can then go ahead and run these four simple commands. I prefer to copy and paste because it's easy. We'll run those. This should only take just a second. We will run the tail scale signing and key package. We will type in the password one more time. And then we will run the second command here. Then to install it, they have you run the update command just to make sure you have all the latest packages and repositories necessary to install the tail scale. I have tried running it before without it and had run into errors, so it can't hurt. It generally only takes a minute or two to run this command and to make sure everything's up to date. All right. And then last we we will run the tail scale install command to actually install the client itself. This shouldn't take but just a few minutes to do the install. Uh, it's a pretty small package, which is nice. It makes it a little bit easier to uh, run this client because it's not very taxing on the Raspberry Pi system. So 
that only took a second. And then lastly, we just have to start the service on the Raspberry Pi. We can run sudo tail scale up, which will give us this quick little URL. So we need to copy that URL. This will allow us to link the device to our tail scale account. So we go to that, we sign in, we use our account we chose, and then we will get a success command returned at the uh, terminal that we're using. And so once we get that success, then we can go back to our tail scale account and we can see the client will be listed within the account. So we can see here, main sale OS populated quickly. It gave us a static IP that we'll be able to use moving forward to access the account uh, from anywhere remotely. The one thing with uh, main sale versus something like Octoprint is you do actually need to add uh, your other device IPs to the configuration file or else it won't let you connect them. If you are running Octoprint, you are done at this point and you can access it from any of your devices that are also running it. So in this case, just to show, we can collect the main sale OS IP address we can log into that and we'll see that while it brings up the page we do get an error when connecting to moonraker see here we go there's the error so what we need to do is we need to navigate back to the local installation of it mainsailos.local and we need to go to the machine tab under the machine tab we'll see there's a moonraker configuration file we'll open that up and we'll see underneath of there there is uh, several trusted clients so the trusted client list uh, doesn't currently have your remote devices listed as trusted, so it'll prevent it every time. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to go back to our list and we'll need to copy the devices we want to access. So say your phone, your tablet, or any other device. In this case, let's go ahead. We're using my Mac mini right now, so we'll use that. We'll copy that IP address and we'll paste it to the bottom of this trusted clients list. We'll save and restart, which will save it in. And then what will happen is let's go back to that remote IP address that we would use and let's reload that page. Now, when we reload the page, you'll see that we don't get that error anymore and it properly pulls that up. Um, now, again, we can go back to that configuration file and we can do that update for all of the different devices you want to use to access main cell. Once again, that is only an, uh, a configuration that you have to do if you're using main sale to access remotely. If you're using Octoprint, that does not occur and you can use it straight away from any device you'd like using uh, tail scale configured on it. Uh, from that point on, you'll good, be good to go. You can test it on or off your network. If this helped you out, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd like to hear your feedback on how this worked out for you in the comments down below.